Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we're yanking all of the hot side and the cold side parts out of the engine bay, and we're Cerakoting them. So in this episode, this is really for the DIY at home coder and refinisher. Um, what we're going to be doing this episode is we're going to be essentially taking a lot of the parts that I've been mocking up my engine bay, cleaning them off, degreasing all that stuff, and prepping for Sierra coat, which is this is a this is the C series. So this is air dry, so you don't need a kiln, you don't need an oven or anything like that. Um, this air dries over a period of five days. You apply it just like you would any other paint or uh, not powder coat, but like closer to paint. So I've got a paint gun here. This is just cheap uh, Ingersoll Rand, um, like a 1.2 tip or a 1.0 tip. And um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna basically be using the sandblaster. You can get these off of Amazon, eBay, Summit, whatever. Um, this is like 60 bucks for sandblaster. It's got its own compartment, but it also has this if you wanna do it out of a bucket. And then the last piece of the puzzle is I've got 25 pounds of um, aluminum oxide. So this is 120 grit, so really fine. It's what Zero Coat recommends for their coating. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking some of my exhaust parts, um, degreasing, cleaning, making sure they have no moisture or grease, um, blasting, and then finally applying the Zero Coat with the paint gun. So that's what this episode's about. We'll see how far we get. I'm going to start with my downpipe because it's already off the car. Um, I've got a mocked up blasting cabinet situation outside, which I'll show you guys. Uh, I guess right now. All right, so here it is. This is my blasting cabinet. Essentially just a Rubbermaid trash can. I've got it screwed temporarily into the fence. And what I'm gonna basically be doing is putting the part down into here and then blasting into it so I can actually recover my media. Um, hoping not too much goes up in the air and that it all falls down there and I can recover it because the stuff is actually not super cheap. So that's it, trash can. If it gets to be too much of a sh situation, I may go and do like a plexiglass cover for the top or something like that, but this is where we're going to start. Alright, situation update. So, did a couple pieces. I got the down pipe done, um, one of my intercooler pipes, and then my top coolant pipe. Um, may go over them one more time once I kind of wipe them off and see if there's any shiny spots left. And kind of see, um, on some of the pipes here, it's, it's not as dull as other areas. I'm not sure how much that's going to affect it. Um, one thing I can't do, and I need to remind myself here, is not to touch it with my fingers, because you have oil on your fingers. Um, so yeah, once I figured out the sandblaster and realized that my breaker had tripped on my air compressor, everything started working fine. Um, sandblasting situation, in terms of media recovery with my trash can setup, uh, seemed to be capturing a fair amount in there. I'm also getting it everywhere. My camera is completely coated. I uh, wish I'd put it in a bag or something before I started doing that, but anyway. Um, going well, I think I'm recovering a decent amount of media. I'll actually um, empty out the trash can, put it back in the bag, and weigh it to see how much it left, and I'll 
update you all on how that's going. So I'm gonna see what other parts I can pull off while I'm in this sandblasting mode. I really don't wanna to have to do this more than once or twice. Um, so yeah, we're gonna keep going on this and maybe get some stuff painted in this episode. Okay, next day. So everything is at least dry to the touch and one day into the curing cycle. So the Cerakote air dry, the C-series stuff, um, this is five day air cure time period. So um, dry to the touch, it actually, it, it kind of cleaned up pretty well. I was concerned because the paint gun I'm using um, is not my detail gun, it's kind of like my backup or primer gun. It's got a 1.5 millimeter tip um, which basically means that it sprays out larger, effectively like larger um, droplet sizes. I can't get it as, as fine as the, the detail gun or the smaller tip that I have in the detail gun. So I was a little concerned because it kind of came out with a natural, like really heavy orange peel in the paint, um, which actually has, let's see if I can come down here on the surface. Um, it's kind of cleaned up pretty well. You still have some of the orange peel. You can kind of see it there in the light, but for the most part, um, it, it looks really good. It looks like what I would have expected for um, for a coating with this level of viscosity or like thickness to it, right? It's not a super thin coating. Um, so overall impressed. We'll see how it holds up over time. Um, yeah, so first stab at both sandblasting and ceramic coating in the same day. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, could, could have done a better job on my masking. You can kind of see, so I'm going to come back in here with a brush and clean some of that up because that's highly visible in the engine bay. So we'll take care of that. And uh, today is just going to be pulling off some more parts and going through the same thing. So more blasting, more painting. Um, I need to do a better job of covering up my equipment when I do the blasting because I now have aluminum oxide dust in my tripod, my camera, clothes, everything. So. Um, and also, uh, one thing I did do is I measured all of my sandblasting material. So I've got everything here in this trash can. But uh, I measured all the material in the box, uh, in the bag, once I reclaimed it from the trash can. And I lost about probably six or seven pounds of aluminum oxide dust, which kind of sucks because it's pretty expensive. So I just need to do a better job of trying to reclaim that today with my setup. So I'll play around with that. But yeah, just more, more blasting, more coating today. Get it moving.
Okay, so this is it. Um, about five days later, um, these parts have been air curing as is part of the zero coat system that I use, the C-series. So this is super high temp, up to 1800 Fahrenheit, um, but air dry, so you don't have to cure it in an oven or anything like that. So um, initial tests, I, I kind of tested with a X-Acto blade um, just on, on some of the area that'll be covered by a covered up by a hose and it seems pretty durable so we'll we'll see how long it sticks again this is a total amateur my first time doing this um, but super pleased with the way it turned out right now and it looks like it's going to be pretty durable so next thing I'm going to do is mount this stuff up on the car and uh, we'll just do a mock fitting final fitting for the um, for the engine bay and that'll probably just give me some placement ideas for my air conditioning stuff which will be in the next episode but this episode um, all good. This was a lot of work, but super rewarding because I have what looks like kind of a final product here, which is cool for this car because it hasn't really looked a whole lot close to final. Um, so yeah, getting there. Um, aside from the aluminum oxide dust, getting in all my camera equipment and everything else, uh, it's pretty cool to be able to do this at home. So highly recommend um, simple media blasting stuff off Amazon and zero coat air dry for the win. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked this. Uh, shoot me questions if you got them in the comments. Happy to reply to those. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.